Hello and welcome to OEG Voices. OEG Voices. OEG Voices. OEG Voices. A podcast bringing you the voices and ideas of open educators from around the world. OEG Voices is produced by Open Education Global, a member based, non profit organization supporting the development and use of open education globally. Learn more about us at oeglobal.org. Hay mucho que aprender y asimilar a nivel mundial. Esperamos. Today, we're very, very pleased to have finally managed to get Hamas Juma, the communications intern and researcher. What I would like is to ask you to introduce yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? Where are you? And what are you currently doing in open education? Thank you, Ayla. I'm Hamas Juma. I'm from Tanzania and currently residing in India. I'm a second year student at the University of Nova Gorica where I attend a Master of Education and Leadership in Open Education. For the past few years, I've been learning how to work on open educational enterprises. And for the past few months, I've been working as a research intern, whereby I've been working to explore the open education trends for the past years, based on the, uh, for the events that have been happening at uh, Open Education Global. One of the key things that I've been working is uh, to work on formulating or uh, creating a roadmap to see where Open Education Global was 10 years ago, the events that have been happening at Open Education Global, and what are the current trends. For these current trends, we've been working on research on seeing what were the members' perspectives of Open Education when they joined Open Education Global in the community, and how Open Education Global has been working on making sure that their goals on Open Education have been achieved so far. So this is what I've been doing for the past few months. All right. Well, thanks for the rundown on what you're working on with us, which is quite exciting. We're loving the data that's coming out at the moment, but I wanted to ask what, what makes you get up in the morning? What do you do in your spare time? First of all, I'm a teacher. I did my first degree in teaching. I was teaching English language and history. I was employed by the government in Tanzania after my first degree, after teaching for a while. I saw a challenge in my community, which was access to resources. So I asked myself, what can I do in order to make sure that my students have resources, my fellow teachers have resources. This has spiked something may say, okay, I have to go back and see what I can do. So for the past few years, I've been working in digital teaching and learning and sharing with my fellow teachers, how can we use digital technologies into teaching and learning? I got to work with 1 million teachers, which is one of the organizations based in Canada that's providing courses for the teachers. So while mm -hmm. working with 1 million teachers, I got a chance as well to work with UNESCO MJP on a program called Digital Teacher. They're providing a free certification for digital teachers. So I have been working on assisting other teachers, how to use these digital technologies, how to use various technologies into creating more open resources that can help their learners. This came into to more light after the COVID outbreak. Before the COVID outbreak, we were doing this and the teachers were like, yeah, we are in Africa. How can we use digital technologies? We don't have the internet. We don't have the resources. We don't have everything. But after the COVID outbreak, when the school were closed and the organizations were shut down, the teachers now started to realize, aha, now we can use those learnings. We can use those experiences we've been getting. And so I've been supporting them to ensure that they keep the learning happening, to ensure that they keep creating the resources and making sure that the students are learning. So I moved from being a teacher to helping another teachers to create more resources that are accessible and their learners. And this is what I've been doing till now. Wonderful. What made you want to be part of the OE Global team? As a student at University of Nova Gorica, I have been studying various organizations and how they work championing this open education movement. I've been observing every organization, what they're doing, how they're doing it. When this chance came up, I was like, yes, I've been working on open education, but the place that I'm from Africa has a few members in open education global. So I said, if I work with open education global, I can champion this in my place because now I have the experience in working in open education global. I've been trying to be a leader. If I'm going back into Africa. What can I tell these universities? What can I say to these organizations? 
But because I have worked with Open Educational Global, I saw this as a good chance for me to understand how it works and to be an ambassador for it. When I go back, if I go to university, I can tell them exactly what Open Educational Global is, how it works. And because I have worked on the roadmap, I have worked on the research trends, I can exactly tell them what are they missing, what others are getting from Open Education Global. Because this is not just for the people outside Africa. When I look on the data, very few universities are from Africa. So it's like a personal passion in it to see my community is getting something out of it. Even if not all universities at once, universities at my home place, how are they going to attain this, uh, this benefit? When you're in Open Educational Global, the Open Education Week, the Open Education Conferences, these weekly webinars, monthly webinars, all of this that I've been attending, they're changing me to be into someone that understands this open education movement in a good way. As a teacher, I've discovered that education is now universal. What is happening in Slovenia? What is happening in Canada? What is happening in any part of the world is relating to another part. So what are these learners getting in African universities? They're not going to be confined in one place. They're going to be out there. They are global citizens. When I was there, I was getting something. But when I got out of my country, went to India for studies, went to Slovenia for studies, I got something. Whatever we are doing back in Africa, it is what is happening on the world. But how are we connecting these learners? How are we connecting as teachers in terms of resources? Africa, we have created low number of resources. It's like 2% of open educational resources are being consumed in Africa. So when you're going into data like this, you're like, okay, if one university in the country get into open educational global, we are going to get somewhere where people go, okay, this is how others are creating resources. This is how others are working on this, not just working inside the university, but intra universities. And most importantly is how we can share these resources. Because there are resources out there, but our students know, do our teachers know, do our admins know. Sometimes you can go to a university, they want to join a movement like this, but they do not know how. After my working at Open University, at uh, Open Educational Global as an intern, now I know how it works, how the membership works. So if I go back there, I think I can be a good ambassador. Okay, I got out of classroom teaching into helping other teachers creating resources. Now I'm moving from helping teachers, creating other resources, going into institutions. So it's like I'm clipping that ladder from the classroom to the teachers, now to the institution, trying to help them to reach more communities and to work better in this open education oh, movement. I'm so glad that there is like a master plan behind your full internship and there is absolutely a huge need. I think we're both on the same page about that in Africa for people to be connected to things that already exist. You've talked a lot about what we're actually doing and more amazing research that you've come up with. And I wondered how important that is in order to then move forward and see how we can make it more beneficial to students and teachers across disadvantaged places like, say, in Africa, but also India and other places, even in the more developed world. And I wondered if there was something that you found in the research and the work you've done that has really surprised you, like an aha moment, maybe it could be like a statistic you know, or just something that you found out or a way of working, or I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> okay. Most important is the, how open education global works. In most of the organizations, the interns are being treated as interns, but in open education global interns is a part of the team. From the first get to go, I was welcomed into a team and trained how you can work in a team without putting the titles. I've been working with you as Isla, but you're not the boss. You're not the leader. You don't have a title. We are working on different categories. We are working on different positions, but we are working as teammates. Say so it has been this with you, with Alan, with Karen and everyone at the team. So whenever you need a team, it's there for you. You're not alone. This was something that I learned most of. This has sparked something in me that if you want to be a leader, if you want to go far, you have to cut across everything, work as equal teammates that you can go far. Everyone has a contribution in it. When you create a document, you put it out there, 
everyone at the team, no matter how busy they are, they'll go at it, they'll put their comment, and when you follow up that comment, they have the time for you. This is how we are supposed to work as a team. And as a team, we are supposed to work, no matter how busy we are, no matter how many responsibilities we have on our hands. When the teammate is there, ask for help, we are there for them. Well, that's lovely. I'm glad that you focused on us, but I also want to know if there's like something in the data or something in the information that you've come across. I, I love that you picked up about um, how well we all work together. I think of the joy of open is the collaboration yeah. and the spirit that comes with it. If that's your aha moment, I'm really pleased with that. Do you have anything else that came through from the data or anything? Before joining Open Global, I knew a little bit about African virtual universities and how it works from Bakari Diallo. He's also one of my teachers and the one that interviewed me while I was getting into University of Nova Gorica. So after finding one of the members who was African virtual university, I got a little bit interested and learned more about it, what it is doing, the initiatives it has been doing. There are some laggings in Africa, but there are some people who are championing it. I was looking on more countries from West Africa, how they are interested in institutional memberships. And so the question was, what is happening to Sub-Saharan Africa? If people from West Africa, North Africa are trying to get into it. So this in in into data tried to spark me. It was my goal that after finishing my internship moment to sit down, try to approach these people, how are they doing it in their communities? Because they have cracked a place or they have cracked something that is unusual. Because mm -hmm. once I was going into the data, you are seeing membership from Canada, from USA, or more than 70%, Taiwan, Korea, every country. But African countries? Yeah, very little. Very little. Yeah, so yeah. how are these able to maintain? Because if no one else is doing it and someone is doing it consecutively, yeah, you have to ask something yourself. How are they doing it? Yeah, and how are they still keeping motivated and getting the required resources and everything? And you've shared with us what your motivations are. What have you got planned for your future? You've just shared that you want to go back to Africa and help institutions to make the right decisions and supporting the teachers and therefore the students. I wondered what else or how that's going to play out for you. My initial plan, as I said, is going back, trying to see how we can work with the universities and how they can realize what they have been missing. Because I have been training for the University of Slovenia as a leader, and it is my role to go out there trying to lead others. I have been consulting with my former classmates that I've been to universities with, trying to understand what are they currently doing and uh, sharing with them what I have been doing. Okay. And the past week I was home for the holiday. I had a meeting with them, trying to see how I can share what I have, because they are already an institution. Some of them as some of them as teachers. I try to send this out to them as a pilot. How are they taking it? So I sat down with them, trying to see how will they take it, because they are my close people. So they'll advise me on how the institutions are going to take it, because they are now part of that leadership in the institutions. After I get to that, I know where. I'm I face the challenges and how I should go for other ones. If it's a successful pilot, I'll know that this is the way to go and this is how I can deal with it. That's wonderful. Well, we haven't finished yet your project, so we're very, very excited to see the end results. I'm just going to thank you now about all the hard work and the thoroughness with which you've approached everything and the work that you've done and the open mind that you have around working with us and how to work and being spontaneous. We're pleased to have Justice in the studio. He's been an intern.